Our gospel reading is from Luke's gospel, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. And first, a bit of context for our gospel reading. In this annunciation, Luke makes clear that God comes with good news for ordinary people from little known places. This king will not be born to royalty in a palace, but to common folk in a stall. Here, Luke highlights the role of the Spirit, a special emphasis in Luke's gospel. And I'll read our gospel reading in English, and for those of you who speak Spanish, you can follow along in Spanish. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Greetings, favored ones. The Lord is with you. <laughs> Not my typical greeting for the beginning of a sermon, isn't it? But I think this greeting, this greeting that we heard the angel Gabriel say to Mary, is also an appropriate greeting for us to receive as well. Greetings, favored ones. The Lord is with you. Mary was perplexed by this greeting, and she needed some time to, to ponder what did this greeting mean. I love uh, Mary. That's uh, Over and over it says she pondered. And uh, I like to follow the example of Mary and take time to, to ponder uh, what, uh, what sort of greeting this might be. Uh, Mary ponders so that she can take into her heart, into her spirit, uh, what God is saying to her, what's going on in her life. Who is this child and what does this mean for her and for the world? When you think about it, as we ponder first with Mary, uh, I wonder if she felt favored. Uh, why would she be favored? She was just an ordinary teenage girl uh, living in an ordinary, insignificant village. She was just doing her chores and living her life. Why would she be favored by God? And what does it mean, the Lord is with you? My guess is that Mary lived a pretty difficult life. She was among the poor, uh, poor people of that time and that culture. Her, her life was rugged. They struggled just to make it from one day to the next. I'm not sure that Mary felt that the Lord was with her. 
And yet this is the greeting from the angel Gabriel. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And as I said at the beginning of our sermon time together, I think this is an appropriate greeting for us too. Greetings, favored ones. The Lord is with you. So let's ponder what sort of greeting this might be for us. We may not feel favored. Uh, we, like Mary, might be just living our ordinary life, doing our daily routine. But when you think about it, who do we read about in the Bible who are the favored ones? Who are God's favored ones told about in the Bible? Is it the, the rich and the powerful ones? Is it the most wise and the smartest ones? seems to me that most often God's favored ones are the ordinary people. People living an ordinary life. God favored the ones, the people, who are like you and like me. The other day I was feeling kind of gloomy. If I'm honest with you, and I want to be, I was feeling quite down and even discouraged. It's really feeling weighed down by all that's going on in our world right now. There's so much loss. There's so much loss due loss of life due to the, the COVID nineteen virus. It's really hard to, to take in the number of people who have died from this virus. And it seems to get worse and worse. And there's so much loss of business. So many people are just struggling to survive. People who never needed to go to a, a food pantry before are, are lined up, desperate for some help. And there's so much loss in our daily connections, our connections with one another. These connections that are so vital to to keep us going and to keep our spirits up. And there is loss in sharing in family time in this holiday season. There's loss in the traditional ways that we observe Advent, and the ways we celebrate Christmas. I think we feel so disconnected from one another. I know I feel disconnected from you, my church family. And this all feels so heavy on my heart and spirit. Maybe it does for you as well. So I shared these feelings of loss with some friends this week. And one of them asked me, what did you do? What brought you out of this depression? It's a good question. How do we deal with all this loss? For me, I had to sit with these feelings for a while. Had to ponder them, to use Mary's word. Had to ponder these feelings of, of loss. I found that I was not able to be productive until I sat with and processed these feelings of loss. I really had to grieve. I couldn't just keep going on, putting on a happy face. I had to take time to grieve these many and deep and profound losses. And I did with this with God in prayer. I took time to grieve, I took time to acknowledge these feelings and to let them out. And it was in that time that I could sense or in a way hear God respond to me in a similar way as the angel Gabriel spoke to Mary. I sensed God saying to me, yes, 
yes, this is a time of great loss. And no, Ken, <laughs> you are not the smartest one of all. <laughs> and no, you don't live a perfect life. But you are favored, and I am with you. You are favored, and I am with you. This was the message I needed to hear. Maybe it's the message you need to hear too. The word favored is closely connected to our, one of our favorite words, our word grace, the name of our church. Like grace, God's favor is not something we deserve. It's not something we can earn. We don't earn God's favor, but rather it's God's gift to us. God favors us out of God's great and abundant love for us. Like me, you may not be the smartest one. You may not live a perfect life. In fact, you may have really made a mess of your life. Or you may be feeling useless. But you too are favored by God. And God is with you. More than anything, I really need to know that God is with me right now. This is certainly one of the most difficult times in my life. And I need to know that God is with me. Because if God is with me, I know I can get through this. One way or another, I will get through this if God is with me. If I am in God's loving care, I can make it through anything and everything that that happens. There may and there will still be great loss and grief. But God is with me in all of it and through all of it. And so I offer this as a message of hope for you too. That God is with you no matter what. No matter what happens. No matter what you're going through now or whatever is ahead, whatever you are feeling, God is with you. But there's more. For Mary, not only was she favored and not only was the Lord with her, but Mary was to bring the Son of God to the world. Do you think Mary's eyes got <laughs> really big and open wide as this proclamation, this annunciation from the angel Gabriel came to her? It's, uh, it's unbelievable. I can see Mary shaking her set, head saying, how can this be? How can this be since I'm a virgin? I'm just a teenage girl. I'm not even married yet. How am I going to be the mother of the Son of the Most High? How can this be? And that's just it. That's just it, Mary. It's not just you. It's not just about you. You are not alone in this. You will have the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will make this happen. Not just the conception, but every step of the way. Every step of the way, the Lord will be with you. The Holy Spirit will empower you. For nothing will be impossible with God. For nothing will be impossible with God. With God. With God, nothing will be impossible. We may not be called to be the mother of the Most High, but we are called to bring Christ to the world. Right where we are and who we are. We are called to be bearers of the light of Christ. We are to bring the hope of Christ to the world and be agents of the peace of Christ. We are to bring to hurting people's lives the healing of Christ. We are called to witness to this good news of salvation in Christ. Like Mary, we may ask, how can this be? 
Who am I? Who am I to show Christ to the world? And you know what God's response is, don't you? It's not just about you. You are not alone in this. You too have the power of the Holy Spirit every step of the way. Every step of the way, the Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will empower you. For nothing will be impossible with God. For nothing will be impossible with God. With God. With God, nothing is impossible. As our reading continues, we hear Mary say, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Can this be our response as well? Let this be our response as well. Even today. Even though we may be feeling down and discouraged. Even though we may be feeling incompetent or unqualified. We may not be the smartest ones. We may not have our life together. We may be scared. But along with Mary, and trusting in the promise of the Holy Spirit every step of the way, we say, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Say it with me. Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me, according to your word. Amen.